So I'm here to tell you my story. I'm super, super excited. And I have to say I love the theme today because I navigated my teenage years a little bit non-traditionally. See, when I was a teenager, I had one dream, and that was that I was going to change the world. I didn't know what that was going to look like. I didn't know if I was going to invent a time machine, go back and stop Hitler. I didn't know if I was going to learn medical science and develop a cure for cancer. I didn't know if I was going to save old ladies in alleyways from muggers. All I knew was that I had to do it. I had to be a part of it. I had to change the world. There were just a few problems, though. I had no business skills, leadership skills, no money. I was smart enough, but not probably the genius I needed to be to develop a cure for cancer. So I did what any teenager would do. I trained to become a superhero. That's right, I trained to become a superhero. I devised a three-part training system. You see, to change the world, you've got to train up your mind, your body, and your heart. I trained my mind. I learned another language. I started learning about issues and problems in my community and around the world, like poverty and tyranny and human trafficking. I trained up my body. While my peers were out breaking curfew or trying to break into their parents' liquor cabinets, I broke out of the house at 2 a.m. and engaged in a different sort of rebellion. I walked across the street to the nearest parking deck and exercised. I started taking kickboxing, and eventually I started taking kung fu. As one of those shy, awkward, artsy teenagers, this was an interesting challenge for me. I had not an ounce of athleticism in my bones. My Sifu, that means teacher, was a little hesitant to throw me some of the bigger challenges, and understandably so. I don't blame him. Every time I tried to do a spin kick, I would fall right on my butt. But the embarrassment that I was going to suffer from that was nothing compared to my mission to change the world and how important that was to me. So I started going twice a day, and eventually I got a little better. He started seeing my improvements and throwing me bigger challenges, as in partnering me with the biggest guy in the room to do what he hilariously called assisted push-ups. If you don't know, that's when you do a push-up and your partner sits on your back. It's all fun and games till you're on the bottom. I continued my training through college and through high school, and I didn't get the opportunity to save an old lady in an alleyway from a mugger. But I did notice that I had changed, that I was changing. I was no longer that shy, awkward kid who didn't quite know how to change the world. I'd become aware, aware of the needs in the world and how I could help address them. I'd become confident, confident in my ability to address them. I'd become resourceful. I figured out who I needed to find, what I needed to find, what I needed to do in order to change the world. But the most important thing that I learned throughout training myself to become a superhero is that heroism is not a solo act. Heroism is not a solo act. Here's what I mean by that. To change the world, it can't be about one person training themselves up and going out there and do good, doing good. It has to be about everyone finding that voice, that potential within themselves to do good and to be heroic. And I believe that true heroes unmask the potential in others to be heroes as well. How do we awaken the potential to be heroic within ourselves? In 2013, a group of researchers studied 25 people that they considered heroes, people who had taken life-risking risks to save or help another person. They wanted to understand, could heroes be trained? And they wanted to understand 
what traits they had in common. They found that they did have some traits in common, those 25 heroic folks. The most interesting thing that they had in common, I think, is that all of them had a high sense of efficacy. What that means is that they all believed that their actions would make an impact. That's good news, because it means that in order to transform ourselves into potential heroes, we need to start just by believing that our actions can make an impact. There's no better way, I think, to do that than with a small act of service for a good cause. So in 2004, my best friend and I went across the country. We traveled and volunteered and did acts of kindness in every state that we visited. Our mission was to talk to as many people as we could and inspire them to find that voice within themselves, to awaken that heroic potential within themselves, and then to have them go out and do good. We didn't want to believe that if people weren't already doing good, helping their community in some way, that it was because they didn't care. And we were right. The more people we talked to, the more we would hear. I've been thinking of getting involved. I'm just not quite sure where to get started. How many of you have ever said that to yourselves? I'm thinking of getting involved. I'm just not quite sure where to get started. There's a lot of problems in the world. It's overwhelming. So when we returned from our cross-country road trip, completely broke, we decided to launch the nonprofit I still serve today called Activate Good in Raleigh, North Carolina. Our mission is to inspire people to think about how they can do good in the community and then to go out and do that. And I'm really excited to report that since we've started, we've tracked over 55,000 instances we've been able to inspire someone to take action for a good cause in our community. The idea of training ourselves up to be a hero is daunting. It feels out of reach. Heroes are people we admire. Often it requires taking a great risk or making a great sacrifice. Nobody wants to, nor should they have to, jump in front of a bullet. But if everybody is empowered, if everybody listens to that voice within themselves, lets that voice, let that voice drive them to action, even if that's something small, like throwing your, hug, throwing your arms around someone in a hug who needs your support, or helping someone pick up their books when they drop them in the hallway. If you can train yourself up to do that, and everyone follows suit, no one will ever have to jump in front of a bullet again. Thank you.